Welcome to Hawaii for Fonboard Maui, the final event of the 1990 World Cup. We're here on the second largest of the 122 islands that make up America's 50th state. And there's some quite breathtaking mountain and subtropical scenery here. And naturally enough, with it, a thriving tourist industry. Right now, though, the focus is on Hukipa Bay as top 28 of the Professional Board Sailors Tour gets underway. The Aloha Classic boasts prize money of 120,000 US dollars. And with the World Championship titles for both men and women to be decided by this event, it's certain to be keenly contested. We'll be seeing highlights of all three disciplines here on Eurosport. That's slalom, course racing, and wave performance. With me is World Cup board sailor Peter Hart. And Peter, could you take us through some of the top men and women in this event? Right, James. The first and most important competitor here must be Bjorn Dunkerbeck. He's already won the overall title, and he's virtually unbeatable in all three disciplines. But we shall see, because right on his tail is Anders Bringle from Sweden, who's certainly got the speed to take him in slalom, as has perhaps Robbie Nash, the people's favorite, has been doing it for as long as anybody, and is absolutely incredible in the wave section. Former game from Australia is technically brilliant, especially in course racing. No one works harder on his equipment. Robert Tiritio from New Caledonia, the French colony. He's excellent in the wave discipline. Britt Dunkerbeck is leading the ladies section. She's Bjorn's sister. And she's chased very closely by Barbara Kendall. She's the sister of the world Olympic champion, Bruce. Angela Cochran from the US. She's on her home patch here. Will be very difficult to beat in the waves. And then Jessica Chris from Australia. She's also a great all-rounder. Another very good wave sailor is Natalie Siebel from Germany. Does a lot of her training in the Caribbean and Barbados. Natalie Simon is a French favorite. She is a great all-rounder. Uh, probably her weakest discipline is the waves. So there are the names to look out for in both the men's and women's competition. The first action we're going to be looking at, though, is the women's slalom event. This is run on short boards. They start across the wind between the boat and a boy. And then you go into five jibes. It's very difficult to overtake on the straight line because the rules favor the leading boards, so much hangs on the jibes where we'll see a lot of pranks and a lot of protests. In the ladies' sections, we should see now a great contest between Dunkerbeck and Kendall and Jutta Muller. So let's get straight on to the action and the main competitors in this event, Barbara Kendall and Britt Dunkerbeck. Britt Dunkerbeck going for her first professional title. And her bid for that title will have been strengthened by the news that Natalie Lalievre, the French sailor, won't be competing. She's instead concentrating on getting ready for the Barcelona Olympics. Well, Peter, how did the action shape up in these early rounds? We see here that Barbara Kendall's got a great start. She's in the center of the picture there. And she, in fact, leads this heat all the way around. Uh, we look now, that's Britt jibing. It's a bit of a wide jibe. She's losing a lot of speed. She's quite a lot heavier than Barbara, and so these moderate winds, they're using six meter sails and about force four to five, will favor Barbara. You see Britt there again is jibing off the plane. She's followed by Jessica Cripps, who's having all sorts of problems in the very choppy conditions. Britt now has got great straight line speed, but she is losing a lot on every jibe. Well, in fact, Barbara Kendall of New Zealand went on to win that first series. She's second overall in the standings, but the slalom is her worst event. So this was a very good result indeed for her. I won my first slalom and I won my first ever big course racing event either. So I was really stoked that I'd improved that much to be able to win. On to the final rounds now, and Dunkerbeck was back with a vengeance after that early round defeat. Peter? Yes, yeah, she seemed to... Uh just improve as the wind got up. You can see now they're on that five meter, five and a half sails, and that's Brit sort of conditions. She does most of her training in the Canaries on Grand Canaria, where the winds are very, very strong and the sea incredibly choppy. And uh, the board speed was just too much for Barbara to handle this time, although she was hanging on there in second place. We've seen here Barbara going for a jibe. She leaves it very wide, but she keeps the speed up quite well. In Maui, the conditions are a mixture of chop and very, very big swells. So that is an ultimate test of board handling, and especially jibing, where these very, very lively slalom balls just tend to bounce out of control. This is Angela Cochran coming through now, but Brit it is who takes the line. Followed here by now by Barbara Kendall in second. Brit obviously delighted with that result. Her overall position is threatened, so she's got to keep winning. So just waiting for confirmation now on the uh, final result of the women's slalom. Britt Dunkerbeck it is in first place, Jutta Muller of Germany second, third Barbara Kendall, fourth Angela Cochran of Hawaii, Jessica Crisp in fifth. So on to the men's slalom event now, and what a different race this proved to be with much improved wind conditions. 
We have here just a titanic battle between Anders Bringle and Bjorn Dunkerbeck. As results stand, Bringle has to come first and Bjorn Dunkerbeck has to come third or worse for him to lose his overall crown of the season. After a great start, Bringle jibes first. He goes quite wide and Dunkerbeck manages just to crawl up wind of him. And look at that board speed as he flies past Bringle towards the second mark. These two are way ahead on the board speed terms now that Bringle cuts up wind. Dunkerbeck uncharacteristically just drops in and that's it for him for this race. Bringle now goes on to win that heat. Here he is now coming into the penultimate mark, followed by Dunkerbeck, who hates being second. You can see just how he sheets in a little bit harder, but it is, in fact, Brindle who jives out of the course and wins that first final, followed by Bjorn Dunkerbeck, and that's Robert Territio in third. Robert Territio is a great result for him. He's one of the smaller sailors, and just to prove his delight, he throws himself into a forward loop. Slalom has now become probably the most popular discipline worldwide. It's done on smaller boards. It's very fast. You don't need quite so much equipment. It's a great test of skill and board handling, but now as people get faster and faster, tactics are all important. You can see how people are always cutting upwind, changing the line between the marks to try and get an advantage upwind or downwind. And of course, everything hangs on the corners. You'll find if you're not in first place that there are all sorts of chop and wake in the way and that throws the board out of control. But the best of these sailors just practice these jibes day in, day out on the worst conditions they can find to make sure they don't throw themselves in. It's worth noting there are very few speedboats who could keep up with them now. They're doing around about 30, 32, 3 knots, which is around about 40 miles an hour. So Anders Bringle streaking ahead there. The bad news for Robbie Nash was that his full start in an early heat led to a disqualification. Meanwhile, controversy dogged the third final as this collision between Anders Bringle and Beyond Dunkerbed led to a uh, complaint. And Peter, perhaps you can uh, talk us through this. Yes, well, the rules state that the lead board has right of way. And the controversy is that as Beyond Dunkerbeck passes Brindle, Brindle claims that he was hit and fell in. The protest committee then had to decide who was actually in the lead at the, at the point of collision. Well, as Didier Lafitte, chief judge of the PBA, says, the PBA rules need to be adapted to the sport. At the moment, they are based on navigation rulings. Here, with Bion and Anders traveling so fast, it is like Senna and Prost in Formula One. Out on the waves, they use everything in their power to win. But you can't compare an engine traveling at 10 knots to something traveling at 30 knots. So, Dion Quebec uh, ruled to be ahead at the point of collision. His first place stands. Disappointment for the Hawaiians, Robbie Nation, Rush Randall. Randall was third so far in the slalom, but he was left behind at the start. Nation had to be content with eighth. I think they'll do better if they do it more often. You know, even like Rush Randall, he's only just starting slalom. He hates it, but it's okay. So. One of the main problems the newcomers to slalom will have is the start, which is a time on distance affair. You have to wind the board up to full speed so you cross the line going sheeted in as hard as you can. And it's very easy to be over the line as it is, in fact, to get left behind. Film again, KA7 there is one of the world's best starters. He there starts downwind of the rest. And also Robbie Nash there, he did a middle line start and he's, in fact, got to the first boy first. Now let me take you back to one of the earlier heats which featured two of the world's most exciting sailors, Robert Territio here, F-35, and of course US-111, Robbie Nash. And here they are fighting it out all the way around the course. Robert Territio, this says that jibes first, a little bit tighter. Robbie Nash goes for a wider line and keeps more speed up. Very windy this race now, they're down to 4.5 meter sails, but Territio holds his lead has to decide whether to hang back or jump over the waves, to, which could cost him time and distance. Coming in there now, though, it's Territio who jibes first and wins. Well, that disappointing race from Rush Randall in the final round let Dunkerbeck take second in that final heat and therefore take first in the overall men's slalom result. Anders Bringdahl pushed down into second, Nevin Sayer of the USA in third, Phil McGain of Australia in fourth, with Matthias Holmberg of Sweden in fifth. Now, men's course racing. Another map, another description from Peter Hart. The course racing discipline involves an upwind leg, but as we shall see shortly, it is also done on slalom boards in winds above 15 or 16 knots. It's a test of tactics, of stamina, and of course, all the jiving skills. You see as an upwind leg and then a series of jive marks, and they'll complete that course twice or three times, depending on the race officer. Robbie Nash now about to launch his course racing slalom board. 
And here's the start. All competitors on the line together. Not surprisingly, it's incredibly dangerous out there with everyone crisscrossing as they hit the line. Some will be starting on starboard, some will be starting on port, and collisions are inevitable. Well, with almost 70 boards out there at the start, it's not surprising that collisions did in fact occur. McGain and TM having a collision. TM talks us through the damage. It's very, very fast. Suddenly, McGain was in front of me and there was nothing I could do. If this is what happens to a carbon board, imagine what would happen if you hit somebody on the head with a mast or your board. So we are straight after the start. The boards now are heading upwind, as tight to the wind as they can. With these slalom boards traveling upwind at around 20 knots, you have to be very sure when it's time to tack. So you're zigzagging your way to the first mark. If you fall off an attack, then that's going to cost you up to 50 yards. This is Dunkerbeck now, screaming upwind. He's sailing the board almost entirely on the fin. But his first jive goes horribly wrong. That is just an uncharacteristic mistake you could see him do. That opens the door for Brindle, who very cunningly goes upwind of him, takes his wind, so Dunkerbeck takes even longer to water start. And now he's not going to be able to make up that sort of distance in this quality field. There we are, Brindle now driving the board off the fin, heading on a tight reach. Dunkerbeck behind him. Excellent stance, using quite long harness lines. Six foot four of him, so he's got a lot of weight to throw over the side. He's tacking now. The sails they're using there, that mast is about 15 foot long. The sail size is about five and a half square meters. That's Dunkerbeck finishing. He wins that second course race. So a motivated Dunkerbeck taking maximum risk to win the next four races. And here are the overall men's racing results. Bjorn Dunkerbeck with first place. Anders Bringwell again in second place. Thorkill Kirstenston in third. Phil McGain of Australia in fourth. And Robin Esch finally in the first five in fifth. Now onto women's racing and entering the water now, Peter. That's Natalie Simon, excellent French course racing sailor. They too will all be using slalom boards because the wind is quite strong out there. It's much, this is a new discipline for them. As little as two years ago, that everyone would have been on long boards with dagger boards, over three and a half meters long, much more unwieldy. The sailors prefer these slalom boards to do course racing on, not just because they're faster, but also it's much less kit to drag around the world with them. This is Barbara Kendall once again showing her prowess in this the course racing discipline, jibing in sweetly there, making no mistakes. In course racing, there's so much time on the reaching legs to make up ground that they tend not to take too many risks around the jive marks. There's Natalie Siebel from Germany there taking no risk and wearing a crash hat. With that many people around, it's very often others' masks to get in the way. That's Barbara Kendall from New Zealand there, sailing the board on the fin. Excellent style, holding the rig still, making sure the board is flat on the water the whole time. Here's a speed specialist, Britt Dunkerbeck, looking good and happy all the way through this race. She sailed excellently in this series, and she was to defend her overall crown. An excellent result, though, for Barbara Kendall, who got top slot at the end of the day, further strengthening her claim to be the overall world champion. She's now narrowed the gap on Dunkerbeck, and the next few days will be especially crucial in the chase for the title. What do you think of the Britt to uh, good friends? Yeah, Britt's great girl. Great girl. She's a lot of, um, had a lot of help this year. And um, she's very fast, <laughs> very fast. Too fast for you? At times, yeah. <laughs> she just blows you past you on the reaches. <laughs> yeah. And so Britt Dunkerbeck's consistency nets her first place. Barbara Kendall has to be content with second. Natalie Simon was delighted with third. Angela Cochran from the US in fourth with way specialist Natalie Siebel in fifth. So with two disciplines finished in this event, the last and most spectacular of board sailors world tour. Now it's time for possibly the most spectacular of them all. It's the wave performance event. And to talk us through the judging, let's talk to Didier Lafitte. Quelle est la plus grande difficulté dans, dans le jugement de cette épreuve des vagues? There is so much to see and take in that it is impossible to note everything down on the computer. A nice back turn will get 10 points, but then the next one will come along and do a nice forward loop, which also deserves 10 points. So you have to go back and adjust your marking all the time. Robbie Nash does not really go for it in the early rounds when his opponent is not very strong, but in the quarters and semis and final, he really lets himself go. 
Nash is a great jumper. Polakov also does lovely loops. Roby, when he surfs, it's true that it's very, very beautiful. Jason Polakov, when he sauts, it's radical. Cesare, when he does his double loop, it's radical. It's very beautiful. And Cesare is a really tricky sailor on the waves. He's exterior is the shows, most certainly, when he sauts. And it's very calculated. It's true that the first hit, for example, Roby Nash, who's going to fall against someone who's not very strong, he's not going to. Se lâcher, comme on dit dans le, dans le jargon, il ne va pas faire des choses extraordinaires, il va, il va surveiller un peu son adversaire et puis au fur et à mesure de la compétition, arriver au quart de finale, demi-finale, finale, là il est obligé de se lâcher complètement. So on to the action, the first competition up is the women's wave event. This is definitely the most spectacular of the three disciplines involved in the World Cup, but the women obviously lag behind the men a bit due to a lack of body strength. Peter, how much is that a disadvantage for the women? Well, certainly when the wind gets up and the waves are as big as they can be on Maui, that strength can be very useful. But wave sailing is a bit like a ballet in that it's a case of stringing together nice moves. And the women certainly can look very fluid on the waves and have something that the men don't. They have a, a real grace out there, whereas the men tend to muscle their way through into incredibly difficult maneuvers. But certainly now, we're seeing the last few years, the ladies are going for loops. They're doing all the most radical maneuvers, and they're certainly not put off by the size or power of the waves. And there we have Angela Cochran completing a forward loop. That's one of the first we've ever seen in women's wave competition. Now Barbara Kendall just getting eaten by the white water. From here you can't see just how powerful those waves are. They're generated by distant storms. They hit a reef and they jack up and they can just wash you straight onto the reef unless you're careful, damaging your equipment as you go. That's Jessica Chris going for a tabletop there. She's more of a slalom and core specialist, as is here Natalie Simon, who actually did very well in this competition. Naturally, it's the Australians and the Hawaiians with their superb conditions who have an advantage in the training arena. But Ozaki from Japan sailed incredibly well, as you see here, showing great style in very difficult conditions. But the big contest was going to be between Kelbiano and Angela Cochran. Both very, very powerful women in the waves. They train here on Hukipa the whole time. Years of training out there know exactly where they're to be at the right time. They can pick their waves well. They know which way they're going to break and naturally that's got to help them when it comes to timing they're off the lips but even they can get it wrong so angela cochran the 89 champion the favorite for this event winning the uh, maui section of the professional board sailors tour overall though the overall title going to natalie siebel who competed in more events overall. Second place, a great result that for Ozaki. Cochran third, Kendall fourth, and Jesper Chris in fifth. On to the men's wave event now, and very much the highlight of the entire World Cup, this. Nash is the favorite, but for the first time, it looks as though Bjorn Dunkerbeck might take his title. Nash must win today and hope that Dunkerbeck gets less than a third place in the wave discipline. Bjorn does a lot of his training in his home island of Gran Canaria where conditions are very different from this, but he still managed to come to Maui and take the locals on at their own game. He's an excellent looper, he's very strong, but will he be able to beat Nash, who is superb in all conditions? Stunker back here in mid-heat, deciding that that board wasn't big enough, nor was the sail. The wind is very, very fickle out there. It's blowing slightly offshore, so it's gusty. Bjorn is a big man, he's 90 kilograms, and so he's gone for the slightly bigger option. So you can see here on landing, the board sinks beneath him rather. That's an excellent loop, but he has trouble getting going in these conditions. Bad news though for Patrice Belbioc, the French hope. He's reached round four of the oh, wave discipline, but unfortunately once again he's got to meet Robbie Nash. Well, as Belbioc tells us, it's becoming a habit. In four events, I have met him four times, and he's beaten me every time. We'll see. Sadly for Belbioc, things weren't to change, and Nash once again shows his supremacy. He has the knack of creating incredible jumps out of very dead situations. Belbioc is no mean performer in the waves, but he just doesn't have that edge, which Nash does. And in these early rounds, Nash isn't even pulling out all the stops. A fantastic back loop, landed exactly, and that's just one of his easier maneuvers. Belbioff goes for a forward there, but it wasn't enough to beat the people's favorite. Nash now comes in victorious to who came, who keep his famous little beach. It's renowned worldwide, it's only about 30 yards wide, and it's covered in rocks. 
And as Bringle now on his way out to his semi-final, Bringle once a course racing specialist over the last three years has trained hard in Maui and is now in the top five wave sailors in the world. He's up against Mark Angulo and was to pull off the sensation of the week by beating Angulo, who is renowned as the best sailor on Who Keeper. Bringle's victory was a bit like a, an English person winning the World Cup skiing. It's incredible to beat a Hawaiian on their own patch and cause quite a stir. Always my wave performance has been decent. I've been riding waves okay and my jumps are not too bad. But uh, I have nothing for tricks. So now I, I filled in my routine a bit with more tricks and stuff and it does look a little bit better for me. So therefore I'm doing a bit better. Now back into the wave competition. Here's Dave Kalama, another member of the Hukipa Brat Pack. Only 18, 19 years old now and not having such a good time putting in some tremendous loops and jumps. The wave's only medium height, about head height, which is very small for Hukipa, which means the sailors have to work that much harder to pick their waves and to create the energy. Well, according to Robbie Nash, who's got nine years of experience behind him, the standard of competition this year was higher than ever before. The whole level of competition is a lot better than it used to be. It used to be four or five guys that were good, and the rest were really bad. And now the first heat is, is really good. Everybody's doing loops and everybody's doing off the lips. So it's a lot more exciting overall. Even the women are pushing sometimes, you know? Well, in the first semi-final, Nash was up against Jason Polokov, and it was very much the opposition of style and age. Yeah, Robbie Nash should have had an easy victory here. In but he found against this young Australian who was in his first year of World Tour that he had a real competitor. Polokov's incredibly strong. His aerials were superb. In uh, his hometown in Australia, he's been seen going for double loops and making them regularly. Nash, however, is supreme in the ways. He has this ability to psych out his opponent. He looks for him on the water, gets near him, and then puts in some huge maneuvers very near him. Polokov now building up for a one-handed loop, showing the judges that spare hand and landing it perfectly. Nash doing his famous sailing backwards on the wave trick. He's now going to spin it out, sail it properly, and go in for an inside transition. Polokov there going for a 360 on the wave, a very difficult maneuver. Doesn't quite make it, but still score good points. Nash now playing with the lip, lifts his heels, gets a great aerial, and keeps it going, staying on the white water in the most critical section. Going for a huge jump there, Nash again, landing it and sailing on. Polokov looks very happy with himself. It's his first competition. He doesn't make it through to the final, but here we have a champion in the making for sure. Next semi-final now sees Bjorn Dunkerbuck up against Rush Randall. Rush Randall, one of the most exciting competitors on Maui. He has his good days and his bad days, and this was to be a good one. Smacking the hookeeper lip there, holding it in. Dunkerbeck now heading out towards the waves, going for a forward, landing it perfectly, popping out and looking for the next wave. Rush Randall hitting the white water, muscling the sail out again, going for the next one. The judges, light wave riding on Maui. Holding it down, again hitting the lip in the most critical section, going for a forward roll off the lip. Incredible manoeuvre. So Bjorn Dunkerbeck unable to realize his dream of becoming the first European to beat the Hawaiians on their home ground. As he tells us, it's true that the Hawaiians are the best on home ground. That always helps. But I would like to take them on at home in the Canaries. They are good on waves, but I am strong overall in the three disciplines. So the final then between two Hawaiians for the second year running, the old rivals Rush Randall and Robbie Nash. This is going to be a very, very tight contest. Nash doesn't normally sail this tack. That means to say his home ground is on the other island of Oahu, where the wind comes from the left, and who keeper it comes from the right. So Rush Randall should have an advantage here, but Nash is always supreme in the waves. That's Rush Randall there getting off on an inside wave to a quick loop. Slams the board around and starts now looking for a wave which is picking up in front of him. As it hits the reef, it'll double in size and jack up. There he is, bearing off down it now, looking for the lip. There it goes, off he goes, onto the lip, looking ahead to the unbroken section. The wave's now closed out, it's up to Nash to do something. A forward roll, end over end, still in the straps and he makes it. 
Oh, there's a 360 from Randall. Is he going to be able to muscle that out? Yes, he does. That's a very high scoring maneuver. Robbie Nash now trying to answer back. And off the lip, hitting the white water, trying to hold on to the board. He's only in about three feet of water there now. So he's got to be very careful not to knock his fins off. Rush Randall, forward loop, off the lip again. Very high scoring. The winds are still around about 20 knots. The waves aren't that big. Nash going for his famous tabletop, but having to let go. It wasn't very good, but I was worse. You know? <laughs> you sound about the truth. <laughs> you have said it. That's true. That's true? Yeah. yeah. I had a bad heat. He didn't have a great heat, but I had a worse heat, so that's the way it goes. Huh? So the underdog Rush Randall, not as strong as Nash, but he took enough risk to overcome the handicap and he was rewarded with a win in that event to rob Nash of the world title. So after 28 stops in the PBA World Tour, the overall wave performance results look like this. First, it's Bjorn Dunkerbeck, second Robbie Nash, third overall Rush Randall, Cesare Cantigali in fourth and Anders Bringdor in fifth. The overall results for the PBA World Tour Brick Dunkerbet takes first place, followed by Barbara Kendall of New Zealand in second, Angela Cochran, the Hawaiian, in third, with Germans, Na Germany's Natalie Siebel in fourth place. The overall result for the men, a phenomenal win for Bjorn Dunkerbet. Not only is he the overall champion for the PBA Tour, but he e also wins each individual category. We hope you've enjoyed... <laughs>